first of all i would like, like to thank all the uh, participants here for staying through i hope you will stay with us till the end uh, in this session we have uh, two very interesting papers and both the papers are focused on the current india quote unquote the new india and the fight for the idea of india as it was conceptualized by the founding members of india uh, i think uh, if we look at the second decade of 21st century uh, i think we can characterize it as the decade of the populists or to be more precise uh, the decade of the right wing populists because you know right wing populism is on the rise across the globe look at uh, uk look at america look at hungary i mean other parts of europe poland back to india uh, what you see is that there is a concerted uh, effort by the uh, right wing uh, populists to uh, to you know monopolize over the discourse and they have been in a, in an amazing way successful you know in monopolizing over the discourse uh, about uh, about uh, the future of their particular countries here we have seen that you know um, uh, narendra modi uh, um, has come to power uh, not only once but twice and quite uh, with quite thumping thumping majority so uh, what is what uh, you know what are the particular features of this you know a uh, variant of populism in india uh, these two papers i hope uh, are going to deal with that and i hope uh, they are also uh, the presenters are, are also going to focus on the possible ways of you know reclaiming the idea of india as conceptualized by the founding members so <clears throat> with these initial remarks i'll welcome the first three presenters uh, the first paper it is jointly uh, written uh, by uh, mirza umar mukhtar shah uh, who is a phd scholar department of political science university of kashmir uh, then we have abdul majid dar phd scholar department of political science ignu and uh, uh, anayat ullah muglu phd scholar department of political science university of kashmir Uh, their paper is titled bjp and populist politics understanding the idea of new india uh, i welcome the presenters to you know begin your presentation thank you thank you murshid uh, this is anayat ullah from kashmir and uh, i am presenting this paper entitled bjp and populist politics understanding idea of new india am i audible to all of you Yes. Yes. Okay. As all of us know, that a new modus operandi of politics emerged in the political discourse of India only after the rise of Narendra Modi to power in New Delhi, or in other words, what some leading scholars prefer to call as emergence of right-wing populism in India. However, India has witnessed the repercussions of left-wing populism during the tenure of Indira Gandhi. and which had ultimately culminated into the nationwide emergency and now moving to the current populism uh, which we are facing nowadays the 2014 elections witnessed the fulfillment of the bjp's long standing efforts to rule india it was for the first time inc was replaced by hindutva motivated bjp as the central reference point of indian polity and it was for the second time that bjp came to power in new delhi although it was marked differently from its first tenure under the prime ministership of ab vajpayee from 1998 to 2004 it is trap led to unfolding of two unprecedented events firstly never had the hindu nationalist movement won an absolute majority in the lok sabha so far and secondly never had been witnessed so personalization of power in india the new ruling party bjp combined four main main features populism nationalism authoritarianism majoritarianism and further the majoritarian dispensation in india combines two further elements the implementation of 
more pro corporate and pro upper caste compound of policies than ever before paired with normalization of anti minority rhetoric like muslims six routine assertions of the imminent dangers posed by the internal as well as external enemies uh, to the nation like internal we can say muslims and external the pakistan or any other country country and a systematic development of false claims and partisan facts india started to frame the rules of new normal in fact long before where by electorate was made expectant of radical alterations in policy and society or what is termed as acche din aane wale hain or good days are coming <clears throat> modi's rhetoric his authoritarian style of governance and his electoral support for the, from the elite and the urban middle class suggests many parallels with other populist strongmen across the globe however the circumstances and tenses and the process that made the modi's the bjp's victory possible and sustains its power are historically complex and in large measure unique to india a new diversion in the policies and politics of modi government came to fore with a renewed and particular focus on to how it is hindu nationalist majoritarian ideology functions and modifies institutions and social relations therefore i am looking here how idea of india is under immense threat under bjp regime and how this regime is working on a new idea of india please unmute yourself mr maglu please unmute yourself i think he lost connection yeah he, we have him back yeah yeah Anayat, please unmute yourself. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I was, I was. It's it's uh, okay. I'm, it's okay. I'm saying that I'm talking on two G, and as I as I all earlier mentioned that it is it is uh, it is not uh, workable here that much. Uh, so let's move to the uh, to the basic ideology uh, with which the present pol uh, political dispensation is working on the ground. in contemporary india toxic and exclusionary ideology has lately gained an upper hand the fact of the matter is that india india is a diverse country and its real beauty lies in accommodation not erasure with the covert patronage of the current regime there is an increasing trend of homogenization seeking to reinforce the politics of exclusion and people who subscribe to it are considered true nationalists while those who are called who do not are uh, called as anti nationalists like you may have see, uh, seen the uh, cases of umar khalid uh, dr kafil and many others who are not uh, as uh, press, uh, i mean uh, subscribing to the version of uh, bjp or mudithwa this trend carries real dangers particularly for people belonging to minority religious community especially muslim sikhs ideologues and followers of hindutva as well as law itself can come to represent this danger this politics of conformism is at best unbecoming and at worst worst perilous for a country like india which embodies diverse backgrounds and identities to deny diversity it, it is legitimate space and thrust an idea of india that solely belongs to a particular religious domination is at odds with the imagination of the constitution if anything has kept india intact amid deep diversities and divergences it is a commitment to uh, commitment to democracy and pluralism the subversion of this commitment feels really real now india has pushed to a crossroad where it has to decide anew what it wants to be a homogeneous state 
monopolized by a Hindu majority or a state where all identities are recognized and given their due space. The future of India and that of the, uh, all those living within territorial bonds is at stake. With the BJP government at center, the secular tradition of India is under immense threat. If the threat isn't colored at various levels, the idea of unity and diversity, on one that the nation has always prided itself on, will soon be in tatters. So I am now uh, moving to how, how this uh, present political regime is, is penetrating political Hindutva in the educational institutions. As uh, all of you may be aware about this fact that textbooks are written, uh, which are totally unfavorable of Hindutva version of Indian society. And uh, there is the consistent installation in the education institution uh, to all those, uh, I mean, professors or installer in higher ranks who have pro BJP or pro Hindutva tilt, especially you may be seeing the vice chancellor of the NU or any other uh, in any other uh, education institution. And recently, you may have seen uh, last year when ABVP people attacked people of left, fact, left faction in JNU. That is another case. And uh, Allahabad, Banaras, and Chennai. These are the cases uh, where, 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 where the university students, uh, BJP has intervened in the university affairs. And further, chanting of slogans like Bharat Mata Ki Jai, Lao Jahad, Garwapsi have uh, taken roots in this new normal. There, we have we uh, we have uh, we have seen numerous issues like like lynching, uh, cow vigilantism, love jihad. Of late, we have seen different states passing laws which are which have which have which have uh, deeply anti-minority or anti-people rhetoric, and uh, for that very purpose. Uh, <clears throat> we have lost him again. Uh, we need to wait for him to join back. Please unmute yourself, Anayat. So, sorry, sir. Sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm dropping again and again. I am not uh, basically responsible for it myself. It is the present political dispensation of which uh, about which we are talking. As last year, Pratabhanu Mehta has written a beautiful article on the present political dispensation, where he discusses three main things. He says that the present uh, regime, headed by Narendra Modi, banks on three things: factor of stagnation. And budget, exec budget execution and hyper arbitrary, hyper arbitrary state. state. In all of the, these th three issues, Indian state is trying with the agenda with its agenda. Indian state is trying to penetrate into different aspects of society, where they are trying to club out or uh, dig out a space for. Uh, for the present political uh, dispensation. Like we have seen rise in the number of fake encounters across UP, or we have seen passing of uh, laws where, uh, where law jihad has been banned, where individual freedom has been, has been uh, I mean, curbed. And we have seen different authoritative steps taken by present political regime, like, Shah, like uh, passing of NTCA, NRC, and uh, abrogation of 370. In all of these uh, issues, and uh, we have seen state working with agendas. And if this agenda continues on, and days are not far when Indian secularism will be in tatters, and India is going to balkanize itself if present populist policies, con policies continue to have their roots or have uh, full expression in the political spectrum. I think uh, it is enough. I must stop here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, 
thank you anna i understand um, i think we understand basically uh, now uh, internet come has that's why yeah yeah we we understand your situation and i think uh, the very fact that you are presenting from there uh, is, is st uh, itself uh, an statement of resistance against uh, what you are facing um, so you have basically tried to you know analyze how right wing populism operates in india how modi has prime minister modi has personalized power in india and um, how in a way the idea of new india the very concept you know uh, right wingers across the globe uh, or they can do uh, they uh, they can create narratives you know they rule often by narratives they create discourses uh, and uh, often what happens is that uh, the uh, uh, those who are fighting against the right wing populism they fail to you know generate you know generate counter discourse in a way for example during the corona time they came up with the idea like uh, corona uh, uh, corona cynics or no so this new india this concept of new india with all is you know uh, you know cultural tropes uh, you know so they comes with these you know ideas these narratives uh, and which you now uh, in a way uh, seeks to you know uh, if not discipline uh, seeks to you know manage the uh imagination of the people uh, seeks to monopolize over the discourse and there is also very much the client media uh, which is helping them to a great extent so you have uh, tried to uh, discuss these things you have tried to analyze uh, uh, right wing populism in india um one point at the beginning of your you know presentation you talked about left wing populism you know there are uh, sometimes called that there are two kinds of populism on the one hand we have right uh, right wing populism on the other hand we have left wing populism uh, for example in uh, in greece syriza you know and their strategy of left wing populism you know uh, could uh, fight against you know other forms of or right wing populism so my uh, question to you is do you think that uh, in india is there a possibility of fighting right wing populism with a left variant of it uh, i hope others might have uh, i think others might have questions so you can begin with this one uh, firstly we must be able to differentiate first what is the difference between left wing populism and right wing populism the only difference which i can suggest is the left wing populism is is uh, i mean backed by uh, i mean anger and the right wing populism is uh, i mean banks on the hate uh, and i think if we talk of populism whether it is left it is right both of uh, both of populisms are anti people are you getting me and uh, this is going to create uh, this is going to create problem to all of us because 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 whether you try to socialize these things but ultimately you have to curb freedoms of the people you have to curb the freedom of people then only then only you can you can put into practice the laws which 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 will curtail freedom like you have recently seen in, in the uh, uapa law adopted by the right wingers in india uapa has been slapped on the people almost in uh, all elite sections of the kashmir were under uh, behind the bars that was the strategy adopted by the uh, right wing populist and if left wing populism is going to fight right wing populism the question is both of the populisms are banking upon the centralization of power which is anti individual liberty and uh, i think both of the populism must be avoided in order to have fruits of democracy in india that is my position on this uh, question sir okay uh, understood uh, i think others might have questions uh, so if you have any uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask anath directly okay sir uh, sir yeah hello sir i am mushid alam actually your concern is really great and it's very true 
where the matter is that why the most of the people are very inclined to the, the that kind of popular propaganda. Can you repeat, please? I'm not getting you, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. You, you concern. You Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your concern is you, really great. To... Yes, your concern is very great. But the very question is here that why most of the people are inclined towards the false machinery or the false propaganda which are spreading by the lurement. Okay, we are bound to be to be bearing with such kind of imposition day by day imposed to the people, and we just likely to bear with that. Why so? Yes, Mr. Nadullah, now unmute yourself. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, dear, uh, I don't remember the name of the person who asked right now question. And uh, the answer, straightforward answer to the to his question is basically we are we are socialized the way. Like Arnab is, uh, I mean, uh, roaring on TV, and people are thinking that this is happening out, and people are socializing their psyche. No doubt, if somebody is said again and again same thing. He tries to socialize, he tries to normalize these things in people. People try to believe those things like which are uh, like power operators in every equation now. If we talk of social media, if we talk of newspapers, if we talk of anything else on earth, whatever has public is, uh, significance is that uh, bank is upon the power. And power equation is working in such a way that People who are socialized by media and other agencies to believe that false is true, and true they are not never given an access to. That is the main problem because because India is a highly backward society wherein you can see only minuscule minority of people who are educated and rest are populace who are uneducated and who don't know what is right, what is wrong in this sense. Rather, we must say that they accept these things without critical or dialogical reasoning. They don't question if, if, if something is asked to them. They don't question the existing structure, what is happening out there. If they are saying that this thing is happening in Kashmir, we have brought about development in Kashmir. We have done this thing, this thing, and this thing. Is that really happening on the ground situation? No one is willing to uh, think that way. And people believe they don't have time. As earlier someone was talking, they are one dimensional. They are engaged in uh, advertising themselves. They take it as if it is true. And that is the main problem. People are, uh, I mean, highly inclined towards it. Hello? Are you getting me? Yes, yes. What, what would be the solution? I know the problem. I know the problem that people are likely to be a with. All kind of such nonsense things are going on, although they are really uh, practically they are wrong or false. But we we believe in those. Why so? Yes, yes. What is the problem yeah. here? If you if you if you have read uh, literature during the freedom movement, what worked out? Literary societies were created out. People were educated about actual happenings. What are the like farmers are right now are knowing what is the impact of policies on their life? They are well educated about it, and that is why they are resisting it, and they are seeing it as in a different lens. They are seeing it anti-people policy, and when people are educated, and when people are when people are, it is the responsibility of the educated people to educate those who are uneducated, and when they are educated, they will come to have firm grip on the you know, concepts which really are, rather than pseudo concepts which they actually believe in. And that is the I think I think that is the right way to to deal with it. Okay, okay, sir. That means people are resisting. Okay, we were saying that the farmers are um, uh, fighting against uh, for their rights. But what the government is doing? It's it's been thirty days. Okay, no reaction at all. They are just propagating their false news. News. Okay. But I don't know the future what 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 to be happened. But uh, until unless the people are be becoming conscious and uh, very much conscious of their right, okay, they are being deprived of. The solution is there in their. Hello. Hello yes. Over over to chair. Okay, sir. Thank uh, you. 
Yeah, I don't think that we have any easy solution to that. Uh, we don't think that we can you know, get over this, you know, in you know, in an hour. Uh, maybe a lot. Uh, we maybe you know, different forces has to come together. You, you have talked about the government or the like, like opposition. What the opposition is doing right now, you know, when the farmers are protesting against the law uh, in this freezing cold, you know, so the people are not stupid. You know, they 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 realize it, you know, uh, but point is that there are a lot of things working in the favor of the uh, populist right wing populist right now you know the media you know uh, the corporate houses are backing them very much you know and it is very difficult to produce counter narrative against such you know powerful media houses you know all the time you know throwing words like you know they are um, anti national or this or that you know so uh, i think a concerted effort to bring together all the oppositional voices you know students farmers you know the anti car protesters if we can bring all the you know forces together there can be you know a hope uh, so let's see let's hope for the best uh, hasan is there any any other question in the chat box uh, so you can put it yeah. hasan is there any question uh, yes the uh, there's a question from uh, sheik abid hasan so Sheikh Abid Hassan, please ask your question. Hello. Yeah, Abid, go ahead. Abid, unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, uh, Salaam Alaikum, uh, Anad Bhai. My question to you is. When will the political class of Kashmir become pro people, uplift Kashmiris of downtown Srinagar and from villages? And uh, dear Abid, the straight answer to your question is they had never been pro people and they will never be pro people. You know how there are reasons to, to, to back it. Because they have always, always lent support to the legitimacy. They have, they have created spheres of legitimacy to Indian repression in Kashmir. I must say, in other words, because I am here, the political class was under, behind bars. 3G was, 4G was snatched, and people were denied access to anything. That is the same political class who has lend support to their policies which have deprived Kashmiris since inception of their Kashmiris were having uh, different uh, framework to rule themselves though they aligned to India because of its secular credentials they were denied in a, in a, in a very very clever way they were denied access to the things and the political class from inception they have worked to fulfill their personal needs there is no leftist in the politics of Kashmir who is taking advantage of things and distributing it among poor. In Kashmir, poor are getting poor day by day and rich. I mean, uh, there is a minuscule minority of rich people in Kashmir. That uh, also not that much rich. Those who are politically connected people are rich in Kashmir. They are getting advantage of the people. But the question is, uh, you are talking about downtown Srinagar. Though uh, I must say they are poor in uh, every sense, though connected in political, uh, like political in political sense they are poor of the Kashmir, but in economic sense they are totally deprived. Basically, they are kept in deprivation by the political leaders because they must resist and uh, the conflict continues. That is the another theory we deal with it. And uh, I must say this, uh, that Kashmiri leaders have always taken advantage to fulfill their own desires. And that is why common Kashmiris are suffering on everyday basis. On everyday basis, you will see such operations, you will see different, different uh, repressive measures uh, on the people. And uh, security, we have here seven, eight lakh security personnel, and as if every Kashmiri is a terrorist. That is not the case. But on the other side, Kashmir has been silenced so far, and a Kashmiri has been silenced so far, no doubt. And if you see on the ground, these people are elected. You may have seen uh, DDC elections recently. 
in a in a in a village out of 10000 voters it is 200 voters who are voting and on whose behalf they are ruling and rest are boycotting it and media is portraying something something else and that is the main problem these uh, you are talking about two people leaders they are not two people they are elected by a minuscule minority like people are not interested in voting here people think that uh, something it is it is going to going to land us in trouble and they don't vote and that is the simple reason that these leaders are <coughs> and you may have read about the kashmir history since inception <coughs> In Kashmir, leaders were installed as well by the government to gain uh, legitimacy in the state. <coughs> and those leaders who were having popular support in the Kashmir were put in to, behind bars. You may have seen Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah in 1953, who was the Prime Minister of Kashmir, was put behind bars because he resisted in India, because he didn't want them to cross the limits which he had set them under Article 370. And you may have seen recently. <clears throat> During the abrogation of 370, people were jailed in a <coughs> huge quality. <coughs> so they are not, uh, we must say, they are not that pro people, they are pro their own interests. Am I making sense? <coughs> yes, uh, thank you for answering to my question. I guess now. Uh, can, uh, uh, there, there is a question. There is a question. Oh. Yes, there is a question. I think uh, Naushin Baba Khan uh, raised her hand. I think. Yes, yes, Hassan. Uh, thank you so much. Achha, um, my question to Anayatullah is actually, I really like the way you have defended every question. And uh, listening to you, mm -hmm. I got this question in my mind is that um, uh, being a Kashmiri, you know what role Sufism play, what role syncretism play in um, Kashmir, uh, Kashmiriyat and Kashmiri ideology, a cultural mm -hmm. ideology, I can say, keeping it aside from the religious one. If you take, for example, Kashmiri folk music, Rabab, uh, the, you know, Mu'e Mubarak and Hazrat Bal and everything. So Sufism is embedded. It is an essence of Kashmiriyat. It is an essence within every Kashmiri. And um, uh, of late, we have seen that there are rise and ascendancy in extreme religious ideology, if you agree with me. So how far do you think that this particular quote unquote extreme religious ideology is responsible for not having, you know, anything extreme is not good is what I believe. You say you preach that, fine, this is pro people, but uh, from your question, from your answer, I would derive that nothing is pro-people and in future there won't be anything that is pro-people. So how far do you consider this quote-unquote religious extremism from both the ends, be it Hindutva ideology or be it, you know, um, Wahhabi ideology, let me say that straight, responsible for whatever is happening in Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you. It is a nice question and I would uh, like to answer it because it is my research domain. I am uh, actually working on Kashmiriyat uh, because my area of of area of city is Kashmir. If we analyze the concept of Kashmiriyat, where you talk of religious syncretism, where you talk of communal harmony, where you talk of tolerance, mutual understanding between Hindus and Muslims of Kashmir, that is, that is, that is, I mean, antidote to the conflict. That is what I am thinking in my thesis, what I am going to write in my thesis. That Kashmir is antidote to the problem because people have taken extreme routes. Uh, Pakistan is claiming that Kashmir is the juggler vein of uh, donation theory. And India is claiming that Indian secularism is incomplete without Kashmir. Am I right? And where we can locate Kashmir here? That is the main uh, thing which we need to look for. Kashmir can be a solution to both of these because Kashmir is pro people where people only think about or look about mutual brotherhood, mutual understanding, assuming conflict, looking for peaceful societies, looking for peaceful society. No doubt the, the, the Wahhabism or the external penetration, you must call it, uh, the religious fundamentalism, which is right now prevalent in Kashmir 
as well as in other uh, societies as well you can see hindu fundamentalism in mainland india and muslim fundamentalism in kashmir it is actually i actually take it as as the way that it has been externally penetrated the local version of islam which people follow here is totally apolitical rather we must say that is a peaceful one and the fundamental route which people have taken over right now no, you may see people have been socialized few people are claiming that we need to be with pakistan other claiming that we need to be with india rest claiming that we need to be with kashmir these are different narratives which are on ground but the question is that we need to socialize people uh the way kashmiri has taught us because it is a long held tradition starting from lala dad nonder nonderishi both poets of the kashmir who have conceptualized in their poetry what it means what it means uh, to be uh, a kashmiri what it means to be a real human basically basically when we talk of humanism kashmiri is uh, kashmiri is all about humanism you may have seen and even i myself believe in the philosophy of kashmiri because kashmiriyat is an antidote to each and every possible problem in kashmir because kashmiris are always uh, welcoming instead of you you if if you come to kashmir a kashmiri will welcome you from the core of his heart he will show, take you to his home, uh, home he will treat you as a, as a, as a, as you are sent a messenger by god they will uh, treat you in a very very um, uh, i mean to say good way and you will remember that role that is the basic socialization no doubt few like now external penetration like political forces ideologies and ideational forces have entered into the valley and few segments of the society have been uh, i mean hijacked by these uh, ideologies or ideas and people try to prefer Brother, if you see somewhere there is conflict in Kashmir between a Hindu and a Muslim, but the Hindu is from outside the Kashmir. A Kashmir, another Kashmiri will come. He will not say anything to the Hindu from outside. He will thrash the Kashmiri. Why you are at loggerheads with the guest? That is the essence of Kashmir. That is the real identity of the Kashmiri. Am I making sense to you, uh, ma'am? Yeah. Yes, uh, she writes. So thank you, Anayat, uh, for this brilliant discussion on Kashmir. Um, I look forward to read your thesis sometime, maybe someday. Uh, I hope so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, so now we move on to our next speaker. Uh,